Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to install Windows 7 Home without losing any of your previous data in the event of your Windows crashing or if you want to upgrade to new Windows. Alright, after inserting your Windows CD and telling your computer to boot from your CD drive, you will reach this interface. Choose your desired language here. In my case, I'm in the United States. I have to choose all English. Now, the keyboard or input method over here is what type of language you want your keyboard default to be, whether Spanish, Arabic, or French or what your mother language is. Choosing this normally synchronizes with your keyboard printed layout. Change the language here only if you brought your computer from your hometown. It would have printed letters of your language. Click next when you are done. Click install now. Over here you will reach a loading page. It will take a minute. Please be patient. On the next window is the terms and conditions of Microsoft for this operating system. Click I accept and then click on next. After accepting you will reach the page asking you what you want to do. In my case I always choose custom not upgrade. Even if I wanted to upgrade I still choose custom. So clicking on custom installation allows you to delete or partition your hard drive. Partitioning allows you to divide your hard drive into partitions, so clicking on device options after choosing your hard drive sends you to the area where you can format your hard drive or partition it. In our case, clicking on format will delete all our data, but that's not what we are here to do. So just click on next, it will open a window stating that your previous data from your old windows will be saved in your C drive in a folder called windows.old. This is all your backup, your pictures and documents are all over here. You can accept this by clicking OK. This page shows the progress of your Windows installation. At this point, all the files are extracted from your Windows CD to the hard drive for the installation to begin. This process doesn't take too much time, it always depends on the speed of your computer. I will speed up the process over here to save on editing. Okay guys, now it's going to restart after the process is completed. <clears throat> when it restarts, do not touch anything at this point. Let it do its thing. And it will go back to that main page after the Windows logo splash screen appears. It's going to load more files for the Windows to complete the process. And then it's going to restart again. Please be patient with it. I have it on fast forward for you so we can save on editing. Okay, when everything is completed, we'll be welcomed with a page that asks to input a username for our user profile. I will just name it user. To input the computer name, I will just input it as user PC and it does it for me by default. After that, click next. Now on this page, it will ask you to input the Windows key. I do not recommend to input it at the moment. The reason for is that on many occasions, if your network driver is not installed and we can't connect to the internet for verification, it will give you an error. So just skip this step for now. On this page, choose recommended settings. Over here is where you choose your time zone. Wherever you are on Earth, choose the city that is closest time zone for you. In my case, I'm choosing Eastern Standard Time. Well, because I'm in Florida. Also, if the date and time is incorrect, you can change it all from here. And after you're done changing and correcting what needs to be corrected, you can just go ahead and click on Next. Now, this page doesn't normally appear, informing you to connect your Wi-Fi to the Internet. But, apparently the drivers for the Wi-Fi for this specific device was installed from the Windows CD automatically. You can choose to connect to your internet from here and then click on next. Uh, if you don't want to connect to anything, just skip this step. In my case, I'm going to be using the internet later for driver installation and Windows updates. So I'm going to connect and then click on next. Click on home network. Now at this moment, it is finalizing installation. I am fast forwarding it to save on time. Please be patient for it to prepare your desktop. By the way guys, I do apologize about the quality of this video. I decided that it is best not to record through a VMware software. I would have gotten the recording in a better quality. Instead, I'm using my 4K camera to record the screen of the laptop. And it turned out to be a little blurry. I thought it would be better to show a physical laptop rather than a virtual device. Now, as you see on the desktop, there is nothing but the recycle bin. 
In order for me to get some more icons like my computer, user files and control panel, you can right click anywhere on the desktop, click on personalize. Here you can choose your theme if you like. At the moment I'm not interested with any themes. Um, on the left side up there it says change desktop icons. And um, after I click that, a window will appear and you can click on computer and click on user files. If you want to have the control panel or if you, or if you want to have the network folder, that is all up to you. In my case, I'm only going to choose computer, recycle bin, and user files. And you can hit apply, OK. Now you can exit from the screen to go back to the desktop. Now as you see over here, the icons that we choose have appeared on the desktop. Now the next step is to check the hardware. Right click on computer, click on manage, wait for it to load, and then click on device manager. Device manager is where all your hard drive shows up in a list. In an event of a hardware that is not installed due to no driver or an error, it will show an exclamation mark near the name of that hardware. As you see over here, here is an unknown device and base system device. Now let's keep in mind that you may not have the same errors that I did. You might have more, you might not even connect to the internet. Uh, Keep in mind that you can always get the drivers for any hardware for your computer from the manufacturer's website. Now I'm going to update the computer drivers, restart the computer. Unfortunately, I won't get to show you how that is done for now because of time, but hopefully in the future I will upload a specific tutorial on how to update or just install a hardware driver for your computer. Now after restarting the computer, we're going to update, so go on start, click on all programs, and up over here, Windows Update. <coughs> click on Windows Update and then click on Check for Updates. Now this process takes a good amount of time so we have to make sure that our screen doesn't turn off on us, the computer doesn't go to sleep, doesn't hibernate and I'm going to show you how to shut that off because it's important to get all necessary updates without any interruption. So I'll minimize that screen, right click on your desktop and we're going to click on personalize and then we're going to click on screensaver then click on change power settings and then change plan settings and over here where it says plugged in we're going to put everything on never so never dim the display never turn off the display never put the computer to sleep we don't want that windows update to be interrupt it and save the changes and then exit to your desktop go back to the checking for updates where you have minimized and i want to inform you that the update process or the checking for update process takes a good amount of time sometimes it can take up to an hour sometimes it can take up to two hours now installing the updates also takes a few hours to finish so be very very patient with it so i'm going to fast forward and um, as you see right now it's only showing 17 but before this it showed 119 updates i installed them it took three hours and now i am going to in install the last updates needed for this computer While it searches for more updates to install, I'm going to minimize this page and go to the desktop. I'm going to activate the copy of Windows, so I'm going to right click on computer, click on properties. And below on this page, it will show that the Windows is not activated. See, so that is not activated. Uh, click on change product key. This is where you're going to put the product key of the Windows or if you have a sticker underneath that laptop. You're going to insert it and click next. I'm not going to show that. I'm going to just fast forward. And after clicking next, it's going to activate the copy of your Windows and it's going to tell you activation was successful. So guys, we just activated the Windows copy and um, we updated it. We also updated the drivers, installed the drivers. Now I'm going to show you how to get your data. So you go to computer, go to your C drive and you'll see windows.old.
click on users folder and choose the username that you had in the previous windows dismiss that pop-up just minimize it choose the username and over here is all your documents your music your pictures we're gonna copy all of these folders we're gonna exit out minimize that and then on your desktop we're gonna go to your users folder the one that we created or the name that you put for you in the beginning of the installation of this windows and then we're going to paste the data that you copied so right click paste it's going to ask if you want to merge this folder click on do this for all current items and click yes it will start to paste your data in your new windows folder keep in mind that if you have a lot of data it will take some time in my case i have nothing to paste so guys i want to thank you for watching and i hope this video helped you and uh, see you again next time